Señoras y señores claustrales, sentados. Ladies and gentlemen, incluidos. members of the faculty, please be seated and cover yourselves. Se declara abierta la sesión the del Solemne Acto Académico de Apertura del Curso 2022-2023 de la Universidad Camilo José Cela. Tiene la palabra el profesor doctor don Juan Padilla, Juan secretario Padilla, general de la Universidad Camilo José Cela, para dar lectura al acto de la Junta de Gobierno por la que se nombra doctor honoris causa al profesor, profesor Paul de Blanc es appointed doctor honoris causa. 
Acuerdo del Consejo de Gobierno de la Universidad Camilo José Cela, otorgando la condición de doctor honoris causa. El Consejo de Gobierno de la Universidad Camilo José Cela, en sesión celebrada el día 14 de septiembre de 2022, a propuesta de la Facultad de Educación, acordó nombrar doctor honoris causa de esta universidad al profesor don Paul Leblanc en reconocimiento a su trayectoria profesional desarrollando proyectos innovadores en el ámbito de educación superior basados en competencias. Y para que coste, y a los efectos oportunos, extiendo el presente acuerdo visado por el rector magnífico y sellado por el secretario general de esta universidad, en Madrid, a 18 de octubre de 2022. La madrina... Doña Nieves Segovia, presidenta de la institución educativa SEC, y doña Carmen Sánchez, decana de la Facultad de Educación de la Universidad Camilo José Cela, se servirán conducir y acompañar a presencia de todos los claustrales aquí reunidos al profesor Paul Leblanc, candidato al grado de doctor honoris causa. En la presencia de todos los aquí.
Tiene la palabra Doña Nieves Segovia. We now give the floor to Nieves Segovia, president of the SEC Education Group and academic patroness for Professor Paul Leblanc to deliver, she takes the floor to deliver the laudatio. Your Excellence, uh, Rector of the Camilo José Cela University, Pierre Emilio, President of the International Advisory Board of the SEC Institution, illustrious faculty, distinguished authorities, dear students, friends of the university community of our university and of the Southern New Hampshire University. and probably Emma and Hannah somewhere in cyberspace. <laughs> Very dear friends. Before I switch to Spanish and before I address a proper laudatio, I would like to start with a personal note of gratitude. Very seldom does one have the occasion to speak publicly from the heart about a dear friend, to express respect and admiration, to reflect on the journey traveled together, whether long or short, to remember his or her generosity and deepen the understanding of the shared learning that made our lives more meaningful and better. I now have this chance. The past two years have been incredibly harsh. Paul, when you welcomed me and my family, in Manchester back in February 2020, we had, of course, no idea what was about to happen to the world. I can now say that the single most precious gift that came out of the pandemic was this unexpected friendship, which translated in unfailing support as we navigated such troubled waters. So thank you, Paul, from the deepest of my heart. Thank you for the hope that you always gave me and for your unwavering belief in the good of humanity. In the history of institutions, there are stellar moments as that transcend, transcend their material reality to become symbols. For the second institution, for the Camilo José Cela University, this is without a doubt one of those moments. In this opening of the academic year, we are marking the 130th anniversary of the founding of the Second Education Group, 130 years of the joint effort to perfect mankind and attain a better society, as stated in the preamble of our ethos. More than a century in which several generations of students and teachers have written the history of our country with a vocation for improvement that they learned in our classrooms. But today, we are not celebrating the past. We are marking the beginning of an, an, of an academic year full of promise and major projects that represent an exponential leap in the history of uh, the Camilo José Cela University. These projects focus their efforts on helping people with their physical, emotional, and cognitive life from the fields of health and education. I would like to say that the success of this course is to be uh, thanked to students, faculty members, and the rector's team uh, with uh, my most sincere welcome to the new students and educators joining the university this year. And today, very especially, we are renewing our commitment to the ideas that make up our identity and uh, that set the course to a new educational horizon by honoring us uh, welcoming Professor Paul LeBlanc as an honorary doctor of our faculty, a faculty that includes personalities such as Steve Wotnia, Nicolás Negroponte, Juan Antonio Samarant, and Howard Gardner, to name just a few members of its prestigious list. I thank you, Rector, for the opportunity you are giving me um, to remember the innumerable achievements and merits that have led to these distinctions uh, and to formally present them to our university community. 
Paul LeBlanc immigrated to the United States from Canada as a child, and he was the first member of his family to attend college. He did so at Framingham State University. He obtained his master's degree from Boston College and his PhD from the University of Massachusetts. He began his professional career as a director of an educational startup, a startup and from 1996 to, nine, uh, to 2003, he was president of Marlboro College. Since 2003, he has been the vice chancellor and president of Southern New Hampshire University, a university that, thanks to its, his vision and leadership, has gone from catering to 2,800 students to cover 180,000, the vast majority online, thus becoming not only the largest American university, but also the most innovative. Paul LeBlanc has held positions in the U.S. public administration and in national institutions such as the American Council of Education, the Association of Governing Boards, President's Council, and the Academy of Sciences Board and Workforce and Higher Education. His professional uh, career has earned him numerous awards and recognitions, and the most prestigious publications praise him as one of the great innovators of higher education in our time. Specifically, Forbes magazine named him one of the most important classroom revolutionaries, a term that I confess I particularly like. So far, a hasty look at his life that does, um, of course, not explain either the, either the significance of his work or the depth of his thought. This university does not recognize the work of Professor LeBlanc by chance. It is born from the communion of educational ideas. Our ethos, drawn up in 1969, is an expression of our advocacy for education in freedom and responsibility, of the respect uh, we have for the plural values of each member of our community, an expression of the uni universal solidarity of our students, and of the collaboration in the creation of open innovation ecosystems. All of them are guiding principles of Paul's professional life. However, it is in the first point of our ethos that our vision converges. Students and their world are the measure of the life and education at the SEC group. It respects them as individuals, strives to awaken their abilities and to ensure their fully realizing their potential as individuals. Paul LeBlanc's recent book, Students First, highlights the shortcomings of a system whose architecture lacks justification in the face of the demands of a new era. The measure of uh, the new university models cannot be, as until now, time in the form of, of academic credit. It is time to put the student and uh, the learning results at the center. An elementary assertion which nevertheless represents a Copernican revolution in the design of formal higher education institutions and that Paul does not only outlines but also puts into practice. He does so through a sophisticated competency model and the redesign of teaching processes and tasks, all based on data analysis and advanced technology focused uh, on a different type of user, that is, the student. A bold proposal which fits the disruptive innovation processes in the field of education, foretold by his good friend and mentor, Professor Clayton Christensen. But Paul's vision goes much deeper. His professional career is defined by advocacy for human dignity. The innovative model offered by Southern New Hampshire University caters uh, to, as Nate said, thousands of non-conventional students, that is, those who had to drop out of higher education or never had the opportunity to be part of it. Students who represent the whole of humanity in its diversity and who need a university degree to access work or further their professional careers, something that is only within their reach if they have an educational option designed to suit the student and not the institution itself. I learned from my father, founder of this university, that in work lies mankind's supreme dignity. And this is why I believe that what we are recognizing today is a life at the service of the dignity that makes us free. I learned much more from my father. For example, that the ultimate goal of education is the humanization of humankind, which is surely why our honorary doctor offers in his most recent book, Broken, 
a sensitive and profound look at the values, identity, and aspirations of each of his students in order to write a master class on leadership and humanity. In Broken, Paul explains how social systems designed to help individuals are failing. But really, as I see it, I think it's a story of love. A story of love for our fellows, of love for our profession, of love for a future full of possibilities. Very few leaders dare to speak of the most powerful motivation that defines the human condition, makes us vulnerable, and moves us to perfection. Vocation is synonymous with love. I also learned that from my teacher. That is why an educational organization must be led from the heart, because our field, is that right, Paul, is one of hope. Formal education organizations persevere in wanting to maintain a status quo that no longer exists. Of course, I'm not referring to the UCJC. I would like to think that the difficult learning process of the past two years has brought a new opportunity, that of reconciling ourselves with our original purpose, that of serving each student to build a better society for all. Paul says that heroic individuals are needed in the classroom, we call these people quixotic people. And they are necessary because these windmills, in truth, are giants. Giants that we must face, just like Alonso Quijano, with the conviction of defending the highest ideals. Rector, illustrious faculty of professors, it is an honor to present Professor Paul Leblanc as an honoris causa doctor for his quality as a teacher, because he represents the best values of the human species, because he embodies teaching, by example, with humility, generosity, and curiosity, or willingness to learn. And because he has made true the words of Camilo Josefela when he said that the university classroom is the last bastion of freedom. Today, Southern New Hampshire University and Camilo Jose Cela University are forever bound in fraternity. Our long tradition of innovation and the renowned record of SNHU go hand in hand with the desire to continue learning together. Today, Camilo Jose Cela University recognizes an educator, an academic, an innovator, a good man, an illustrious man, a exotic man. From today, the university will count him among its faculty, an honor that it is not just for whom it is bestowed, but particularly for those who bestow it. Thank you, Dr. LeBlanc, for joining us on this journey and for accepting a privileged place in our university community. Thank you very much, Paul. The future is now, because class is in session. Gracias, and welcome. the solemn investiture of Professor Paul, Paul LeBlanc as Dr. Honoris Causa by the Camilo Jose Sela University will proceed. Please stand. Professor Paul, LeBlanc. Professor Paul LeBlanc, please approach with the fullest consciousness to take the pledge to Camilo Jose Cela University. Camilo Jose Cela University, at the proposal of the School of Education and in recognition of your relevant merits, proclaims you honorary doctor. As a witness of this dignity, and by virtue of the authority vested in me as rector, I give you the doctoral degree. Furthermore, I confer this laureate cap 
a symbol of this high honor. Wear it on your head as a crown of your studies and merits. It's going to be a bit hard. But. Receive now from the hands of your academic patroness the remaining attributes of this appointment and distinction to know the book of science which you must cultivate and spread and which should serve as a warning that as great as your talents may be you should, you should always show reverence, respect and consideration to those who were your professors. The ring which from time immemorial has been granted in this solemn ceremony as an emblem of the privilege of signing and sealing the reports, consultations and arbitrations of your science and profession. The white gloves, a symbol of the purity that your hands must preserve and a sign of your dignity. Dr. Paul LeBlanc, I admit you and incorporate you to the Faculty of Doctors of Camilo Jose Cela University. I invite the new honorary doctor to take the oath. I solemnly swear on my awareness and honor to defend and respect all rights, privileges, and honors of Camila Jose Sela University, wherever I may be, and to respect this institution and support it wherever, whenever I am required to. Si así lo hicierais, que la memoria de todos los claustrales you should do so, let the memory of all the members of the faculty bear witness. Should you fail to do so, let the memory of all the members of the faculty hold you accountable, because you have joined this university, received now in the name of the faculty, the embrace of fraternity from those who are honored to be your brothers and colleagues. Tiene la palabra el doctor Don Paul Leblanc. Dr. Paul Leblanc has the floor to give the inaugural lecture of the 2022-2023 academic year of Camilo Jose Cela University as an admission speech in this faculty. Dr. Leblanc, you have the floor. Please be seated. President Doña Neves, Chancellor Don Emilio, members of the SEK board, esteemed faculty and staff, distinguished guests, my friends, my family, and most importantly, students. It is such a pleasure to be with you. I look pretty good, don't I? 
Come on, this is like beautiful, beautiful groves. <laughs> so when I go back to Southern New Hampshire University and they wear the UCJC robes all the time, they say, wait a minute, why are you not wearing us in your robes? I'm going to say, because these are so much more beautiful. These are my, this is what I will wear at all our ceremonies. I am so honored. I am honored to be recognized by this fine university, an institution I have come to know, to admire, to learn from, to collaborate with. This evening, this visit, even with all of this amazing ceremony and my robes, feels like coming home to my family and my friends. University Camilo Jose Sale has its roots in the dreams of Carmen Olma and Felipe Segovia, Segovia when in 1935 they took over the management of the first school in what would later become SEC. Their son Felipe Segovia Olma was born in a classroom really was born in a classroom with chalk dust in his lungs. He once said, quote, I was born in the wrong place in the wrong time, but when I was born, it was ideal, in the classroom. He took his father's dream and expanded it, building more schools to educate more children, and then with his daughter, Nevia Suovia, now leading SEK, he created this university in 2000, naming it after his friend, the great Spanish writer, Camilo Jose Sela. He did it at his, at his side, was not his mother, Maria Rosa. Now, I'm gonna do this next part in Spanish. And I'm gonna ask you to forgive me because I don't speak Spanish and this will become abundantly clear to you in a moment. When I practiced it with Neves, she was laughing so hard, she was crying. So I've been practicing ever since that episode and I'm going to give it my best. So the students in the room, remember that to learn is to try and fail. Hopefully, if not fail so badly as to embarrass myself forever. So here we go. Ahora la Presidenta de Segovia continua la misión de su familia de educar anima a la gente. And now President Segovia follows in the footstep of her family, trying to increase the produce for the next generations. I am honored to be here today. To, uh, I mean, my opinion is going to be is called to be part of history, building a university community and a family that's transforming lives and developing a role that's uh, increasingly important in Spain. And of course, this means uh, uh, much more than I can express with words today. I apologize. Thank you, you're very kind. I, I, I always thought that my faculty and staff colleagues at UCJC were kind people, and now you've convinced me utterly that you are very kind. Thank you. I want to speak directly to the students, but the message is for everyone in this room. But I hope what I say resonates with them. We know, as we sit here today, that the world is a troubled place. In fact, to be young, to be a university student, is to only know it as such, as the last 20 years has seen recession, war, a pandemic, and the existential threat of climate change. If students spend hours on social media, and come on, we know you do, everyone looks like they're having a better life than you. All the time, you're being fed a steady drip of fear, outrage, and misinformation designed to addict you to social media and the serotonin rush of temporary thrill. And though you may be more connected than any other generation before yours, you're probably more lonely as well. The speech is a little depressing at the moment. I'll change. Because UCJC, like all great universities, is in the business of hope. As a student here, you are in a community that believes the best hope for the future of the world is you. UCJC exists because its leaders, its faculty, its staff believe that the most powerful engine of social change is education, as Gandhi famously said. If we are to fix a broken world, the effort will start with education at places like this university, because education, knowledge, and the search for truth provide the light that fend off the darkness. Yes, it's true that in surveys around the globe, when students are asked why they are attending university, they always start with a good job and a great career, material comfort that those will afford, but that's not enough. 
And when this wonderful faculty and staff do their jobs well, they are about so much more than work and jobs. It starts with embracing you for who you are, whether LGBTQ or Roma or person of color or devout Catholic, an observant Muslim, a committed atheist. My own country has struggled to fully embrace this idea. But we know that diversity of plants make a forest stronger, that diversity of revenues make a business stronger, and we have to remind ourselves that diversity of people make our society stronger. When Spain, like the US, embraces all of its people with all of their difference, Spain becomes a better and stronger society. Your generation knows this in a way that my generation has seemed to have forgotten. A great university will give you the challenge, the freedom to challenge, to grow, and to think new ideas, new ways of being. It is less about teaching you what you should know and more about teaching you how to ask better questions of yourself and your world. It must help you connect the dots to realize that your life does not stand alone and that the choices you make impact people you will never know and that it is only when we take care of everyone that we can then take care of ourselves. If a pandemic and a war and climate change have taught us anything, it's that we fight this fight together. We need you to be warriors for humanity when too much humanity holds sway, whether on the battlefields of Ukraine and the treatment of women in Afghanistan or racism and erosion of women's rights in America's right-wing extremism. We need to equip you for that fight. That's our job. And to work for a university is to believe in the future, to believe in students. So in that spirit, and because I feel like I accept this honor on behalf of my university and its students, I want to give some student voice to the ceremony. So we put a little video, and I hope you'll bear with me for the next three minutes or so. So did someone cue the video? going back Everybody has played a role in, in helping me get to the spot I need to be with academic advising, helping me put together a schedule that worked with my individual needs to the accessibility team, making sure that everything was in an accessible format. Everybody has played a crucial role to getting me to where I am. You know, when people talk about the doors that education opens for you, it opened a huge door for me. Getting these two degrees just changed my life. It really did. It changed the course of our lives. This will improve my life as a refugee and I will get 
and ability to support my life, my family, and my community. Getting to the point where I'm the first person in my family to earn a bachelor's degree is really, really special. And it hasn't been easy, but I know it's worth it. My graduation and the journey I've gone on has helped us to push our boundaries and to do things we never would have thought we would have done. It was an amazing journey. It was an amazing moment. I never forget my life because I made it today because of the SNQ program. This is a 14-year journey for me to get this degree to finish it. So to be here today is absolutely amazing. It's never too late to start again. I mean, you just keep going. You'll reach your goals one day. Just don't stop. You only fail when you stop. I just can't believe I'm here. I'm actually graduating. I never imagined being able to say that I'm a SNHU alumni. It's definitely uh, an accomplishment for me. I wanted to include that video because the title of my book last year was Students First. So my primary comments have been to students, though, for the whole room. And this video is to remind all of us that we do this work for students. That's our hope. That's why we exist. That's why this university exists. Tolstoy said that the key to a happy life is to find work you love and then do it, and then do it for people you love. I have been lucky. I have found my calling as an educator, work I love. And then I get to spend my career doing that work for people I love, students. On the moment, if I may take a moment to talk about love, I want to acknowledge my friends and family who are here. These are some of the people who are dearest to me in the world, and they've traveled from the U.S. and Ireland. Lots of friends are watching this online, including my two daughters who could not be here today. And if you'll forgive me one more personal moment, I want to acknowledge my wife, Pat, who's sitting here. She wave or something, Pat. Uh, this will not be hard to believe, but when I fell in love with her 44 years ago, I told her that for a summer I was 100% sure that I was 100% sure she would marry me. And in that moment, she said she was 98% sure she wouldn't. Thank God for the 2% opening. She remains with my daughter as my compass and my refuge. If an honorary degree is a kind of thank you to a person, it is I that should be thankful to an institution to do this work with all of you, for all those students we serve. In that sense, I am indeed honored, and I fear undeserving, but I accept it with a full heart, the love for my students, for my colleagues, and now for this university. Thank you. Querida Presidenta. Dear President of a SEC educational institution, Councillor of uh, um, Board of Universities of Villanueva de la Cañada, Vice President of a SEC educational institution, uh, Board of Directors or Advisory Board of the Camilo José Cela University, Management Board of the SEC educational institution and distinguished members of the Southern New Hampshire University Board queridos socios de la universidad dear partners of the university staff of the uh, corporate uh, units of the SEC educational institution faculty, dear faculty of the university, students, dear friends. Bertrand Russell once said that a large percentage of the difficulties of the world 
are due to the fact that, that ignorant people are fully sure and intelligent people have doubts. Everybody knows that we are undergoing difficult times with terrible events that are having terrible consequences and uncertainty has settled in all areas of society. The best melting pot for amalgamating all of the elements, all of the methodologies of these big doubts and trying to find solutions is the university and its universal nature. In the opening of this this new academic year, uh, we are faced with this phrase of the innate fame is invigorated with movement and is strengthened by walking. Because every year, uh, this ceremony that uh, instills optimism in us and, and makes us look at the future with more peace is consolidated and uh, stronger. My first words should be words of salute, should be welcoming words in the inauguration of this 2022-2023 academic year of the academic of the uh, Camilo José Cela University. This ceremony is enriched with the appointment of a new honorary doctor in our faculty, Dr. Paul LeBlanc, Chancellor of the uh, South New Hampshire University, which is regarded as the most innovative university in the north of, of the United States. The inauguration ceremony of this new academic year may seem very formal, but one more year as uh, chancellor of this uh, university, uh, I really feel uh, optimistic, uh, and I want to share this optimism with all of you from the bottom of my heart, uh, reflecting the feelings of all of the members of this university that I represent. This course uh, uh, is now going back to the mainstream situation that was interrupted uh, by the pandemic in the previous academic years. Uh, this required a big effort of all of us uh, in the faculty and the university committee, but it also represented a big opportunity. It was useful for reaffirming the strength of our structures, of the human resources, of the, the procedures and methodology that allowed us to introduce new elements, new enriching innovations for our university work. These elements, innovations and developments, will keep moving forward when they are deployed uh, into the, the next academic year. Uh, with the third year of our strategic plan, including objectives that are based on entrepreneurship, welfare, social commitment, and digitization. These factors are, of course, as could not be otherwise, aligned with the approaches of the Global Education Forum, an initiative that the SEC Educational Institution implemented in October of 2021 to move forward in the creation of the Third Millennium University in line with the new needs of our society. Last year, the university carried out a great preparation work for the obtention of the approval of new uh, degrees uh, in our university. This is why we have included new uh, degrees and university masters as well as our own programs. I would like to point out those that are connected with health sciences, which has, have been created uh, within the framework of our recent collaboration with the HM uh, Hospital Network. Uh, it should include the incorporation of new degrees in the areas of pharmacy and medicine. All this new educational offer is an answer to the goal of the UGJC uh, uh, of being a benchmark in education in response to the needs of the third millennium, being adapted to your needs and also adapted to the demands of a society that is ever more complex, in which technology is 
um, inherent to any field and needs urgent needs to develop training itineraries in the field of health sciences, combining uh, knowledge, uh, practical experience, and innovation. Nowadays, knowledge is very quickly developed, and uh, scientific discoveries are quickly integrated into the society and into the production process. It is therefore difficult to predict what the world of our uh, students will be in the future, will be like in the future. So this speed gives us the need to be able to differentiate between what needs to be taught and not. And this manifests that the necessary acquisition of knowledge is not enough. We need um, a mastery of skills that allow allows us to, to be renewed, uh, allows us to uh, make cross-cutting uh, checks and, and uh, to have a permanent renovation in um, knowledge and skills uh, by means of the lifelong learning. In the Camilo Jose Fela University, we always say that it is not about uh, educating the best people of society, but educating the best people for the society with capacity of thinking and capacity of, of acknowledging the doubts that I made reference uh, at the beginning of my speech. Because the university itself, in this field of doubts, is subjected to a large number of influences, trends, and problems. And it should be able to navigate through them uh, with a firm rudder in order to find the north or northern point. We can point out the social sciences, demography, globalization, eutarchy, uh, mental health, climate change, the ODS, um, sustainable development goal, and personal equilibrium. Then technological ones like uh, AI, the learning, uh, the digital learning environment, cyber, cyber security. Uh, also problems of uh, economic nature that are linked to the cost of education and the future of, uh, of the demand of new skills and capabilities. And then, of course, the trends that have an educational nature and are inherent to the generational changes with new school models uh, for which we need to give stress to social abilities, entrepreneurships, and the uh, phenomenon of microcredits and uh, online education. And lastly, the political influences with the volatility of the reforms that uh, are being deployed and the new regulations uh, that have never been consulted. This scenario is the basis for the Global Education Forum which uh, was organized by the SEG institution and includes a large number of national and international centers with the goal of moving forward towards the university of the future. The transfer of knowledge that is uh, present in, in teaching must be accompanied uh, by the generation of knowledge. Uh, and this is why the scientific community uh, will continue to make an effort. Uh, it is on top of this axis that the new model of academic career pivots. It has been implemented through a, a pilot project, and it will be fully deployed throughout the next uh, academic year. The degree aims at offering development perspectives and improvement for the investigating academic staff. And it also aims at facilitating the dedication of that staff to scientific research. This attention to the aspect of generating knowledge is a response to the line that has been imposed by the new regulations of the Spanish Ministry for Universities. We are not, not just the next uh, educational law, but the previous royal decrees mark the conditions that are not easy to fulfill by the universities since they are too extreme and demand full and specific dedication. 
Among these demanding conditions, we need to pay attention to the effort that is required from us to develop research levels that are in line with this function that is demanded from the university. And this is what we are working on. And this is why the academic career that is being implemented limits the number of credits that have to be taught by the teachers in order to give space to the researching activity that is stimulated and rewarded. This task is already uh, being fruitful. During the next academic year, we will make a special effort for the implementation of uh, an online degree program that will be deployed outside of Spain, mainly in Latin America. The extended teaching uh, and learning model will continue to be implemented in our degrees. Nothing we've done in previous uh, years, none of the projects for the new course, the new academic year, uh, could materialize without the commitment and the dedication of our teaching and researching um, staff and also um, without our administrative staff. What we have achieved is, uh, has been thanks to a continuous, uh, continued work of many people who are the lever and the support point. This is why I wish to express to all of them our most warm gratitude, uh, our gratitude for their constant contribution, on their believing in us, with us in this project, because every day they have been paving the way uh, to the creation of this university. All the results have been um, um, grounded on everyone's effort. Um, this is all marked by an expansion program that expands uh, the offer of our university. At the beginning of my speech, I mentioned the uniqueness of this opening ceremony, which is accompanied uh, um, by the enrichment of our faculty through the appointment of a new honorary doctor, Professor Paul LeBlanc, uh, defender of, of competence-based uh, learning regarded as uh, one of the 10 most innovative university uh, rectors of the United States and one of the most influencing persons in higher education. Our president, uh, Nieves Segovia, uh, gave an excellent laudatio in which it was demonstrated that it is an honor for us to include him among the group of the doctors of our faculty being sure that his educational ethos and his work fully coincides with ours and sure that his contributions will be highly enriching. This is precisely uh, the, well, uh, s since he joined his condition as member of our faculty, uh, he gave us an incredible lesson. Dr. LeBlanc, welcome to our faculty. Let me finish by expressing my gratitude to all of you for having chosen our university, for having uh, given your trust to us. I wish to mention my governing board, uh, which really uh, runs out of, of time, of hours, for uh, the completion of their own work. I would like to thank you all the greatest success, and I would like to tell you that this is your home. We will see each other on campus. Thank you very much.
nombre de su In the name of His Majesty the King, I hereby inaugurate the 2022-2023 academic year. This ceremony is adjourned. Oh, 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 oh,